In Finnish folklore, there are many cautionary tales about wages of dishonesty and embezzlement. The most common retribution is death. But sometimes the perpetrator is punished with merely public shaming and loss of reputation. It is perhaps no surprise that in an agricultural country there are many cautionary tales about the removal of border signs that marked the boundaries of farms. Finland is a country of harsh climate and unlimited natural resources. So therefore, the ownership and possession of a piece of land was quite literally a matter of life and death. The possession of land and the farm borderlines and their signifiers were sacred. In the following story, we meet a scoundrel farmer who disobeys these rules and lets his greed go too far with nasty results. The Revenge of the Border Guardians The county of Laihia is well known for its large, rich farms and farmers who are extremely tight with their money and possessions. Among these people there stood out a farmer, Mauno, who was especially famous for his greediness and hunger for earthy possessions. His farm was already quite large, but yet he was always trying to expand it in all possible ways. This was the cause of many disputes and quarrels with the neighbors, and he had quite a nasty reputation. In those days, about 130 years ago, all farmers were busily transforming their forest areas into meadows and fields. Mauno was no exception, and with his farmhand was relentlessly cutting down trees, burning their stumps and digging ditches to make the forest floor suitable for growing grain and cattle grazing. In forests, the boundaries of the farms were marked by ancient standing stones. These standing stones prevented many arguments and lawsuits among the money-minded farmers of Laihia. Just beyond one of Mauno's forest areas was a spring, which he saw as a perfect future watering place for his cattle. Unfortunately, there was a standing stone which marked Mauno's forest land, ending just 100 meters from the spring. This standing stone had not been a problem before, but now, with the prospect of cattle grazing there, it was a big problem. Mauno cursed heavily when he realized the situation, kicked at the standing stone and spat on the ground and said, This is not fair! I'm an honest, hard-working farmer, just trying to make a living. And this stupid piece of stone is preventing me from it. But then Mauno had an idea and he smiled. The following night, Mauno was walking through the misty forest with his farmhand. Both men carried shovels. Mauno did not like to have a witness but the standing stone seemed quite big, and he figured it would be impossible to move it by himself. He said, Our neighboring farmer is so dumb that he won't even notice if we move the stone just a little bit, and nobody will get hurt, right? However, people are so narrow-minded that it is best to move the stone at night, so there will be no gossip. The farmhand hated the whole idea from the beginning and would have preferred to sleep in his bed like any honest people were doing at night. He grumbled, I'm not worried about gossip, but about something much worse. 
Mauno got angry and shouted, Stop that superstitious nonsense! You are just a tinker's son who grew up in a shack by the swamp. That kind of talk belongs there. No wonder you have remained penniless like your father was. The farmhand gritted his teeth and shouted back. My father was only a tinker, but he never had to walk like this, like a thief in the night. You greedy swine! You won't get away with moving a border stone. This quarreling went on as they walked in the night forest, getting closer to the border stone. Finally, they came to the stone and stopped there. Both were quiet now and looked at the stone. The standing stone was surrounded by bushes of heather. The swirling mist hovered on the bushes and above the stone. The mist seemed to form into forms. But when one tried to look at the forms, they disappeared. The farmhand looked around and whispered, This is an ancient border from pagan times. Wizards of Lapland lived here before our people came here. They set these borders and raised these stones. The stones have a bad magic in them. There are evil creatures who are their guardians, and they will wake if we disturb them. Mauno just cursed at him and told him to start digging. Grimly, the farmhand obeyed, and both men shoveled away the ground around the stone in silence. The ground was quite rocky, but they were used to shoveling work, and gradually the standing stone was revealed entirely. It was about the size of man, and was resting on a large bed of rock. Mauno yelled excitedly, There! Can you see it? It is just a stone! Where are these guardians, you fool? Now, let's push the stone over so we can carry it to its rightful place. Mauno pushed at the stone with all his strength. At first, nothing happened. But then the stone tipped over and crashed on the bed of rock. There was a dark hole where the stone had stood. The men stared at the hole. A horrible smell drifted up from the hole. And then they heard strange, rasping voices. Who made a hole in our ceiling? If it rains, we will drown. I can smell Christian blood. The ugliest face they had ever seen emerged out of the hole and looked at them angrily. The creature had a hairy face small red eyes, and small horns on its forehead. The farmhand did the only sensible thing and started running away as fast as he could. Mauno, on the other hand, had many faults, but cowardice was not one of them. He grabbed the shovel and smashed it onto the ugly face as hard as he could. The creature howled in pain and disappeared back into the hole. Crazy with fear and greed, Mauno started rolling the stone towards the place by the spring. When he reached the intended place, he heaved the stone up and grinned victoriously. 
Sweating, he looked around and walked back. The hole was dark, and there was no sign of the creature. Then he decided that he had tested his luck enough and started to run all the way back to his home, grinning with delight. The next morning, Mauno threatened the farmhand with severe difficulties if he spoke to anyone about what happened last night. The farmhand shook his head gloomily. I will stay quiet. You can bet on that, but there will be trouble now. We broke the roof of the border guardians, and you moved the border stone. Mauno just whistled a happy tune and thought about the future watering place for his cattle. However, when evening came, he locked all the doors and windows with special care. His wife saw this and asked if something was wrong, but Mauno did not say a word about the whole business. He took out his rifle from the closet and placed it beside their bed, making sure that his wife did not see this. Then he blew out the candle and lay down beside his wife and fell asleep. He did not know what time it was when he awoke to a shrill and crude chattering. There was enough light in the room for him to see that the bed was surrounded by three frightening figures. One of them pulled out his bed cover. They were the border guardians, and they looked extremely angry. He had never seen anything like them before. They were covered in long black hair. Their ears were pointed and small. Legs were short and arms were long. They were otherwise naked, but for golden heavy necklaces and sparkling gold chains. One of them had a nasty bleeding bruise on his forehead, and this one said, You broke the roof of our home out of greed? Now there are stones and dirt dripping into our soup kettle. The second monster said, What do you think will happen when it rains? Our home will be filled with horrible rainwater and we cannot swim. The third monster said, You have to move the stone back. If you don't, we will come back here every night and make your life hell. But now, you must listen carefully. We have written this beautiful song as a warning for all the stupid fools like you. Mauno was amazed when the monster started singing a song to him in hideous harmony. We are the guardians of the borderline. We are handsome, noble and wise and brave. If some fools try to move our sign, they will end up in an early grave. The monsters were about to start another verse of their song. But then Mauno grabbed his rifle and fired at the creatures. The terrible bang ended the song, 
But when the smoke from the gun cleared, Mauno saw that creatures were not hurt. His wife woke up, saw the creatures and ran away screaming. The monsters were quite thrilled with all the noise and started laughing, screaming and jumping as well. The entire house seemed to shake with their commotion. Then they started to break every single thing in the house. With desperation, Mauno saw how all the plates, furniture and valuables of his house were crashed and broken while the creatures laughed and jumped around. Mauno shouted for help, but his wife was nowhere to be found and he guessed that his farmhand would stay as far away as possible. Then the creature started pinching and scratching Mauno, chasing him around the house. This seemed to go on forever, but then the rooster crowed the morning crow, and suddenly the monsters disappeared. In the light of day, Mauno told the whole story to his wife. The wife was furious and shouted, You must go back there and undo the damage you have done. If you don't, I will kill you myself. This kind of greed has destroyed many houses here in Laihia, and I will not let it happen to our house. Then the wife started crying and Mauno tried to console him. I admit this looks rather bad, but if we hold out long enough, those creatures will give up. After all, I am an honest, hard-working farmer who is just trying to make a living, and they are nothing but a bunch of supernatural underground monsters living in a hole. Then he took out a bottle of homemade alcohol from the cupboard and started to clean his wounds with it, wincing in pain. However, the physical pain was nothing to the pain he felt when looking at all the broken things lying on the floor. He took a sip of alcohol and sat down heavily, shaking his head. He started to wonder if moving the border sign had been such a good idea after all. As expected, the border guardians came back the following night, despite all the precautions and locked doors. They made a terrible noise all night, tearing down and breaking everything they could and shouting obscenities and insults at Mauro and his wife. And once again they disappeared at the break of day. When the third night came, Mauno was finally ready to give up. His hair had turned white and he was crying aloud. I give up. You have won. And so, on the very same night, Mauno went back to the scene of his crime, and with great effort, he rolled back the stone to its original place. The border guardians were watching his efforts with delight, and as Mauno sweated and toiled, they sang this song to him in shrill and horrible voices. Mauno is a filthy crook and a cheat But now he is sorry for what he has done He carries the border stone back, it seems And we the noble guardians have won the very minute the stone settled into its right place with a loud clanking noise, the creature stopped singing and disappeared. It is quite understandable that Mauno 
kept quiet about the whole incident afterwards. The creatures never came back. It would be nice to say that Mauno changed his ways and became less greedy, but that was not the case. For the rest of his life, he was still notorious for his penny-pinching and single-minded pursuit of possession. But never again did he try to move a border stone, for he knew what is lurking beneath them.